What up, Jake Paul Random? We're about to get into it today with a little throwback, Jake Paul Biz. Only the OGs remember Jake Paul Biz. Today we're going to be talking about crypto, business, boxing, NFTs, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's going to be a little bit longer of a video and clubhouse, but you're going to get some good knowledge, some good shit to help you in life, good life advice, maybe some dope stories. I'm doing this with some really credible people, Paolo, Buster, Farak. A bunch of dope people are going to be coming up on stage at the clubhouse, so it's going down, baby. Look, sometimes one piece of advice can change your life. I got my protein. And we're ready to do this. Oh, shit. I got to start this. All right. Starting the room. Here we go. Quiet on shit. Let's go, baby. Yeah, I think, Je I think everyone's going to be joining here in a second. We're going to let people sort of pile into this room. Hell yeah. Ooh, I, see, I see some dope people down there in the audience, Jay. Some dope people in the audience. Amazing. Oh, my mom. Wait, my mom's in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Bro, that's hilarious. That's so Lewis Howe's in the building. Wow, brother. Let's go. Let's go. Sign up for your fight. April. What's the date? April what? April 17th. 40, Let's four, go. 46 Ask days. Ask him what he's going to do. Ask him what he's going to do in that fight. Okay, what are you going to do? Oh, man. You already know. Uh, <laughs> first, round, first round decapitation. Wow. Dude, I've been, I've been loving the, uh, the strategy of the last few months behind... All the content, all of the uh, the mind games, uh, just how you've been building yourself up. I'm I'm uh, appreciative of the game you're playing. Thank you, bro. Yeah, that it's uh, you know I've been saying it, it's like boxing. Boxing needs some some new juice inside of it. You know, like it's been the same thing for a while now, and it's all about content. You know, content is king. I mean, that's what we see across the board in really any industry. Um, I know the, the, the content and the attention you can get around the content, right? Exactly, exactly. Like who, who do these people want to see fight? You know, like you, you're not gonna really be interested in a fight if you if you don't know who they are. I want to make boxing cool for like the the moms out there who don't really know what's going on or don't really know who who's fighting. I want to make it like entertaining and uh and so that anyone can click onto that pay-per-view and leave feeling like damn that was dope that was really dope yeah, it's, it's an event it's an, it's an entertaining event and how big was the last one you guys did it was like one of the top 10 of all time or something right like pay-per-view yeah it was the eighth so it was the eighth biggest pay-per-view uh in, in in history i think is that boxing history or is that Anything, any, all, all pay-per-view events, eight, eighth biggest. Um, all ten of those spots happen to be uh, filled with boxing slash MMA. I think one of those spots has like a WWE match in there. But you, that that I think that's what we got. Like the success of that came from combining, you know, Mike Tyson's audience and the the older generation of of nostalgia and Mike Tyson making a comeback combined with like this younger generation of of social media and content and like me pumping it out to this influencer YouTube YouTube audience so obviously it was it was super super successful um you did amazing man congrats you're, you're doing your thing and uh you're, you're doing great stuff it's fun to watch Thank you, brother. I, I, uh, it's, it's funny, bro. All my, my coaches are like, man, you boys from Ohio are built different. <laughs> and, and I'm starting, <laughs> I'm starting to believe it. I think it's because they put, like, I don't know if you grew up drinking milk all the time. Dude, whole milk, like gallons a week, whole milk. I would literally be drinking milk with, uh, with my, with my meals. Uh, like for dinner for dinner like to, and to think about doing that now it's like the grossest thing in the world to me but 
We got so we got so many uh, hormones pumped in our body now. <laughs> facts, facts. It's uh. Yeah, diet's a diet's a super important part. I kind of want to bring my mom up and see. You have to. I have to. You have to. Especially talking about growing up in Ohio, we gotta hear it. <laughs> mom, I don't know. If, I don't know, if mom. She probably doesn't know how to use it, but mommy just said I invited you to be a speaker. <laughs> oh, there we go. Hey, what up, mom? Let's go. <laughs> How are you, Mom? I miss you. I miss you too, honey, but drinking milk is not what made you who you are. So what do you think it is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's your um, amazing uh, genes, your familial genes, and your mindset. I think, you know, everyone can eat right and do the right things working out, but you have to have a very strong willed mind. And I think your genetics and your family history, not just me, not just your dad, but going back generations uh, has fed into that. And I'm, I'm seeing it more than ever. I don't think I would have realized that had I not, um, you know, had not you and Logan gotten to where you've gotten, like, I'm, I'm so impressed by your mindset. It's, it's crazy. This is Paul. This is Lewis. I'm from uh, Delaware, Ohio. Lewis, Florida. I know who you are. We're cut from a similar cloth, and I uh, appreciate uh, you as a human being in the world, and uh, I know both both your sons. Um, so much. It's been, it's, been, it's, been watch, it's been fun to watch them uh, grow and, and do amazing things. Obviously, they haven't been perfect. But, and they've made mistakes, but they've been overcoming them and growing, which has been amazing. I'm curious, Pam, yep. would you share one thing about Jake that most people don't know about him? Uh oh. Growing up, growing up, that really, <laughs> you know, maybe made you proud about the way he sh acted growing up, about the character he had, about maybe it was an event, it was a moment that people don't know about Jake, but he really showed his personality in. In a way that inspired you as a mother. What would that? What would that be? So I keep getting all of this. This event has caused the uh, groupies to come out and keep spamming, calling me. But um, so I'm sorry about that. It cuts out at all. But so many people ask me this question. They they literally want to hear about those you know those character events or the funny things that no one knows. Um, but. I can tell you the very first time that I was just amazed by my my kid OJ was he was in elementary school and I was called by the teacher up to thank me and to praise me because my kid OJ um, was befriending the autistic and Down syndrome kids and being nice to them when others were not. And Jake, you know, was a, one of the popular kids. It wasn't like he was the kid in the corner, of course. He's the, the class clown. Everyone knew who he was. Everything he did was people paid attention to. And he was being nice and befriending the, the kid with Down syndrome. And that is to this day, something that Jake would do. And it was um, something that people don't realize. And uh, like, th people don't want to accept that about Jake. They want to think he's so many different things than that. But he's got the kindest, biggest heart, and he loves the underdog, and uh, it made me very proud. That's cool. And I'm, and I'm curious, in his adult life, and then I won't, I won't hijack the conversation anymore, but since we got you here, man, I think it's amazing to hear. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, since, since he's moved to L.A. and kind of his adult life, the start of his adult life, what's the, uh, the event, the accomplishment, the piece of content, whatever it is, the thing that you're, that you're most proud of, most inspired by, whether it be his acting, uh, you know, I think it was 
uh, what was that? Uh, which kids channel is it on? I can't remember. Disney. Di- it's Disney. Disney. Yeah. Whether yeah. it was him being on Disney after, you know, being an actor out here, doing movies, doing TV, doing vlogging, doing boxing, like music videos. What's the thing that you're most inspired by and most surprised by that he has taken on and actually accomplished that? Okay, so most people think, oh, my kid was on, you know, Disney, and, and that was the biggest accomplishment of their life, but that is so far from it. Yes, so proud when he got on Disney. That was amazing. But if you look at the past six, seven years, um, Jake has amazed me so much in his business acumen and how he can talk and how he has learned um, business and how he is so smart in so many different realms and he can take on so many different facets of life and then do them all very, very well. He is definitely the Capricorn goat on the side of the hill that can hold on no matter what comes at him. And I think it's not what happens to you in life, it's how you react and that is what has impressed me the most about Jake. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> oh, nice. That was so sweet. Oh, my God. It's the truth. <laughs> hey, I have a question. What do you What do you think? My, so my mom, just so everyone knows, my mom obviously is super supportive of the boxing stuff. But when um, she, gets, she gets really scared when I'm talking shit to all these people online. She goes, Jake, I'm worried about your safety. I'm, I'm, worried, about, uh, I'm worried about your safety, like all this stuff. And funny story, um, basically when I was talking shit to McGregor, I got like so many death threats, like thousands of people saying like the mafia, the Irish mafia is after you and blah, 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 blah. And you know, my mom was all worried and I think she, I think you're still worried, but I think this will, this will help calm you down, mom. But, um, (laughs) but I wasn't worried. I was like, man, like this is the fight game and people should be able to talk shit. Like that's what makes this hype. If, if, you know, if you're scared of talking shit or if people can't, you know, take a joke on the chin, you know, then, then this isn't, they shouldn't be in this sport. But we, we've heard like from deep down in the, the business people in Conor McGregor's uh, camp that they actually like love the shit talk and are, are super excited about it and obviously have some. Are, are interested in the business side of us fighting, so um, they weren't too bothered by it. But I know, I know, mom, you get all scared what, about boxing, and especially on fight nights. I think you're the, probably the most nervous person in the room, hands down. You think? <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, Jake, when do you think uh, do you think you'll be uh, Connor will actually do the fight with you sometime? And if so, when do you think that'll be done by? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, um, you, we're, we're talking to his team, and there's there's high levels of interest. They want me to get more fights under my belt, as as do I. You know, um, the the narrative is always there. I, I truly believe that I could beat him, and it, it'll be a massive fight. And at the end of the day, this is this is a business. But I think it happens in the next um, in the next thirty six months. I think. Me getting some more W's under my belt, knocking out Ben Askren, who is a prominent MMA fighter, uh, taking on hopefully Dylan Dennis, who is Conor McGregor's like best friend, basically, and who has been talking shit to me. He uh, is scared. Clearly, he's like, D- I wanted to fight him. <laughs> I wanted to fight him for for this this match, but. Uh, he was blaming like a knee injury so after I knock out Ben we'll see if he actually takes the fight but wow. Nate Diaz you think within three years you think within three years the fight will happen with you and Connor for sure for sure I mean let's go as, as long as he as long as he keeps you know he has to he has to win right now you know he he got knocked out in his last fight so you know, if he doesn't get some W's under his belt, it's not going to be as hype and it'll sort of look like we're just doing it for a money play, which is not what I want. Like, I genuinely think I'm going to beat him and I think he's the perfect the perfect opponent to talk shit back and forth, to create content, so on and so forth. So, 
Um, I, I definitely, I definitely see it happening. Do you think that would be the number one on pay I think we would. I think we would. Yeah, be be in the top five, hands down. Regardless. Oh, yeah. I mean, Jake can't say it, but the answer is yes. <laughs> let me let me let me jump in here. So, you know, there's another important thing just to touch on, which many people aren't really aware of. But Jake's for hi Pam, by the way. Hi Paulo. Hi. Uh, it's great to have you up here. Pam has her party hat on in her first week to Clubhouse, so everybody in the audience, make sure that you follow Pam, vlog mom Pam, and check her out on uh, YouTube as well, but Jake's first boxing event, which was a pay-per-view boxing event, which was the first ever influencer pay-per-view boxing event, there's two big historical moments in there, one is the Jake and Deji fight had more concurrent views than the Logan type portion of the fight. That's number one. And number two, we had over one million pay-per-view buys online, which in the history of boxing, that's the number one purchase online pay-per-view boxing event in history. And we had over a million purchases in queue on a platform that crashed. The other thing is for that event, because it was a YouTube product, and the event wasn't available for iOS, so it would have had millions more that had purchased that fight. So I think it's important to look at the trailer numbers in aggregate internet and television. It was, I think, a million seven by something around there. And that makes it top 10. But in terms of the internet, Jake's first pay-per-view fight is the number one purchased boxing event in the history of boxing on the internet for pay-per-view. And what I also will say is Jake, in my opinion, is definitely the savior of boxing. And by bringing the contact sport to the youth, it's like the adults that grew up with the Rocky movie franchise. Boxing is a very exciting sport to participate in, hit the bag, work out, jump rope, you really feel part of a movement. I believe what, what Jake will do for boxing is not what UFC came in and did to boxing about 20 years ago. UFC choked out boxing, and I think by Jake's presence and performance that he gave with Nate Robertson and Jake has a very special gift and talent. Jake can move his feet and move his hands. Jake has brought excitement back to boxing and will definitely knock out the UFC MMA. In my opinion, I'm bullish. I bet big on Jake's last, last fight, and I'll be betting again on this fight. So anyways, I just wanted to highlight those historical moments which say a lot. So I'm Paolo, and I'm done speaking. Jay, I'm curious, what do you think is your greatest skill right now? Your athletic ability, your boxing skills, your ability to speak and communicate trash talk, or your ability to make content go viral? Of those four things, what are you the best at right now? I would, I would say it's still my ability to like speak, market, and make content. Uh... <laughs> Just because that's that's what I've done since I was 12 years old, you know, like I remember being 12 years old making a YouTube channel with my brother and we were running around filming crazy shit pranking people and understanding how to go viral. There was a there was a platform at the time called like iFunny. I'm sure some of the people here might remember iFunny, but it was basically like somewhat similar to like Reddit. It was just like cool stuff. and. When I was 12 years old, me and my brother would sit there for like hours at a time posting our links to YouTube videos for like people to see them. And you could only make like nine posts a day, but your post would like be seen by anyone, anywhere from like one to like 50 people, depending if it was a good post or not. So I would make the maximum number of accounts that I could 
on iFunny and so would my brother. And so we'd make like 10 accounts times nine posts and put like 90 posts up a day each. So 180 posts sitting there like hustling our little YouTube videos at 12 and 14 years old. And they would start to get all these views from doing that. So I don't know, I've just been doing the content marketing thing f for a while. Um, but I would say quickly, my boxing ability is, is becoming one of my most prominent skills. Uh, hands down. And is it, what's the training look like right now? Is it two hours a day? Is it five hours a day? Is it depend on when the fight's coming up? What's the process? Yeah, it's it's a really fluid schedule. Uh, it's not like set in stone, which is which is the beauty of it. We sort of have this science down for for three fights now that we're we're following this game plan that's clearly worked and brought me into fight day feeling like a million bucks. Um, but sometimes it's two times a day. You know, we're jogging uh, five, six miles. We're doing sprints, uh, nonstop sprints. We're uh, hitting the mitts. You know, today I did 11 rounds on, on the mitts, um, shadow boxing, hitting the heavy bag, speed bag, jumping rope. Um, and then I'm sparring anywhere from two to, two to three times a week um, against MMA guys specifically now because I'm obviously fighting an MMA fighter in Ben Askren. Um, and they, they just have a different style of, of fighting. You know, they, they have this more wild, um, unorthodox way where they put their head down and throw different punches that you're not typically used to seeing. So, um, so yeah, doing all, doing all that stuff. I'm doing uh, CrossFit training. I'm, I'm doing light weights. Uh, and the recovery is a huge part of it. So I'm doing yoga, I'm stretching, I'm in the ice bath sometimes twice a day, hot baths, um, sauna, uh, you know, Theraguns, cupping, the whole nine yards. It's really, it's, we really have it, have it down to a science at this point. Um, but it's a, it's a lot. It's literally a full-time job. And I think I've done it all uh, at this point. I feel like, um, as I'm saying that humbly, but like I've dabbled in different things from business to wrestling growing up playing football uh you doing youtube like and i would say the two hardest things i've ever done was vlogging every single day for 800 days and then and then just boxing period um a lot, another interesting thing is like people don't even really realize this but sleep is like a part of your training so you literally have to to force yourself to get nine to 10 hours of sleep a day because you're tearing down your body so much that you have to, you have to get that recovery in, in, the, in the deep sleep. Wow, the fight that you I... sleep, that's yeah. it. Thank you, Jake. Tank, go for it. By the way, Jake, yeah. Tank, right? No, I don't think you know who I am. It's oh, all good though. Almost the three, two, three of the dopest meme pages on Instagram. Bro, I've, I've seen your page, Influencers in the Wild, bro. It's the funniest yeah. shit. <laughs> hey. We were talking about meme dealers. <laughs> bro, I think, like, I, me and my friends, whenever I'm out in public, like, about to film content or something, I'm like, we all, like, look around. We're like, all right, let's make sure we don't end up on Influencers in the Wild. Yo, just do me a favor. Get one of your boys to step about 100 feet out of the shot. And uh, capture you guys doing something nuts. You'll wind up on that page. We'll act like this conversation never happened. So okay, deal, deal, crush. deal. <laughs> how did that start? Like, how did that? How did that page start? Like, because it is this funny thing. Like, it's so crazy, and I, this is why I love the internet so much. And the internet's undefeated. But it's like, I would. Li I was literally. I don't know. It's probably two years ago. I, I was just starting to see so many fucking people make content in public and i was i was like bro this is crazy like our whole entire world is shifting you're, you're literally seeing these people make tiktoks or youtube videos and like i'm just like what the fuck's going on well you, you just have a, a generation of people that are real comfortable doing wild shit in, in, in public now and i'm I'm, a, I'm older i'm 40 and it came from two things one i shot a video with this um the, the account is called a piece by guy and he just does like weird shit like there's a video of him peeling a, a hot dog like a, a, a string cheese and eating it and 
there's a video of him giving the finger to his friend back and forth across the street like for 30 seconds that video had like 50 million views he just does weird shit so we pretended that we were stuck in a chinese finger trap on 8th avenue in new york city and i'm like 250 pounds big dude he's a little guy it looked like I. I people were just looking at us like what are these people doing but it, the video killed and i just i feel stupid shooting content in public too so i saw people shooting content i was like they probably feel stupid too so let me make this account to make fun of myself and then it just it fucking blew up it's like the biggest you know the biggest thing i've ever been a part of i was shooting stuff for my page tank sinatra and uh, listen dude i'm laughing at them a little bit sure but i'm also laughing with them you know no, right. That's the beauty of it is it's like funny to, to make fun of them sort of, but then you're guilty of it as well. So like well, <laughs> everybody is. That's the thing. Like you see somebody out taking a picture in public. If my mom takes a picture, she's thinking how many likes is this going to get on, going to get on Instagram? Is he going to get seven or is he going to do really well and get 12? Like she's, you know, everyone just thinks social media first, but I was just listening to you talk about your schedule and I didn't know you were posting on iFunny. Um, back then I just feel like people like I was listening to Mr. Beast on here a couple of weeks ago and he was painting this picture he's 20 something years old and he was telling the story about the, the video of the biggest firework in the world and he was talking about organizing cranes and getting you know materials from firework suppliers and I was like this guy would be successful no matter what he's doing he's a fucking business owner period he's organizing million dollar you know the, the the video budget was like seven hundred thousand. i was like this guy is like a, a network in in himself so jake to hear you you know say that you were gaming the system i just think people don't realize how much work goes into getting attention um and figuring out the, the science of it and not only that the time of making multiple different accounts and posting nine times a day on them you know people don't think that they just you got lucky and that's it they don't ever think past that People, people don't, uh, people don't view you being a YouTuber as a job. They just see these kids who are making videos, and it's looking like they're running around with their heads cut off, and they're making a ton but of the money. Have to get made. Exactly, and and uh, yeah. that's why I say that's why I compare being being a YouTuber to being as hard as being a, a professional boxer. It's the same. It's different, obviously, but it's the same level of like dedication. Uh, time involved and and just mental toughness and grind nonstop but it's funny you mentioned the the sort of network thing about Mr. Beast um because you hit the nail on the head with these digital stars and influencers are are the run the whole gamut A to Z they're the producer they're the content director, they're the marketer, they're the videographer, they're the editor. Um, and Paolo, actually, when I was probably 18, was the first person that I saw who turned this into like a theory. And I, Paolo, I don't know if you wanna speak more on that because you were, you were literally like, you came to me with a chart and you were like, do you know why you're so valuable? And I was like, I, I don't know, Paolo, I'm just 18 year old. And you're like, oh, you're the network, you're the marketer, you're the filmer, you're the producer, you're the, the like, you had this whole thing figured out uh, seven years ago or six years ago now. All right, thanks, Paolo, that was dope. <laughs> You know, I, I came out of the traditional world and, you know, before this came to life and, you know, to take it one step further, Jake's also a visionary and he's entrepreneurial. Jake created his own network. Jake has always been making people famous. Jake is, you know, who paved the way for people like Mr. Beast to follow in his footsteps. But if we look at historically, you know, to, to build a hey, we got 2,000 people listening. Let's go. All of these parts of the supply chain, the writer, the producer, creative producer, segment producer, location scout, permit, wardrobe, hair, makeup, editor, music composer. And what blew my mind when I got involved in the space really intimately eight years ago now is I looked at what Jake and them were doing, and they were doing all of those things in real time. And 
you know, Vine was very early. It was not considered serious. I think YouTube is taking it a bit more seriously, but if we looked at a six second video, you look at a Jake video back then, there were 11 different scenes in a six second video. And each scene at times was in a different location, sometimes a different wardrobe. And then they were scoring to a six second song where if like the song was off by a split second, it wouldn't perform as well. And if we look at, you know, a good example, I go back to Jake, it's like how many thousands of vines that Jake produced and published? How many, you know, thousands of pieces of Instagram content? How many thousands of pieces of YouTube content has he produced? creative directed directed produced starred in written i mean it's it's way beyond than what meets the eyes we talk about use gc user generated content but at the end of the day this is creative filmmaking and your fame is actually you know lewis asked going viral you know if we think about things historically the biggest tv commercials the biggest directors that ever came out of music videos and TV directing have become some of the biggest filmmakers because it's how well can you tell a story that can create an emotional impact in someone's brain to activate an emotion that makes you memorable and that's the one thing that Jake has really perfected and that really is the thing that stood out to me eight years ago is like yo you're the modern day ad agency TV network director actor writer producer editor all of it you're, you're a savant genius, and you guys don't even realize it yet. So, yeah, I mean, you know, thanks for touching on that, Jake, for sure. I've been here early pitching this to a lot of different big, big private equity firms back then that looked at me like I was fucking crazy. And people are like, a Jake Paul isn't going to be around next year. And I'm like, no, he'll be around for the next 20 years because his creativity is what makes him visible. And you can't take that away from somebody. Mm. I, lo- I love everything <laughs> Paul is saying here. And Jake, I wanted to ask you, you've had this massive rise over the last six, seven years since you really, before moving to LA, but since you've been here, it's gone to another level. I'm curious, what is the thing that holds you back from double the exposure, double the results that you're already getting? What do you think is the thing that's holding you back and the thing that's gonna get you to that next level you're looking for? Yeah, great question. Uh, I think it's all about team and, and who you surround yourself with because at the end of the day, I can I can only be in so many places and do so many things and have so many conversations. So I think uh, a lot of people don't realize that like an individual is also a scalable company. And so that's what I've been trying to figure out, especially now. Uh, is scaling myself and how, how do I do that? How do I hire more? How do I uh, bring more people around me to help to help grow my individual brand? Um, so it's definitely it's definitely difficult, and uh, you know there there's only so many amazing people out there who can help you get to where you want to be, um, and then I would say I would say you know making mistakes. I've made. A lot of mistakes and I think that that's due to growing up with a ton of power and responsibility and fame and um, being in the spotlight at an early age so that that has also been a huge detriment to me is like what with with great power comes great responsibility and things slipping through the cracks and um, and growing up on camera with the whole entire world watching obviously your life's going to be under a microscope so that's definitely um something that has has hindered my success is like all these different mistakes where i'm like damn like you know this isn't an accurate this isn't an accurate representation of who i am and um and the world not being able to like fully under understand me so um i i think if i would have had this power and responsibility when I was a little bit more mature and had you know a little bit more life skills under my belt, then um, then some of those mistakes wouldn't wouldn't have happened and I wouldn't have surrounded myself with certain people, etc. Um, Is there one mistake that you look back and you're like, ah, dang, I should, you know, shouldn't have done that one thing? 
or is it all part of the process and all the learning and lessons that's been helpful to get where you're at? Yeah, I, uh, I have a tattoo on my body. It says no regrets and it's spelled wrong um, on purpose. <laughs> um, but but I, no regrets. That's literally what it is. It's from this movie. It's from it's from Meet the Fockers, um, I believe. But uh, oh, yes, I, I forgot the name of it. Where where the uh, the kid with the, the family? Eyebrows. That's family. Yeah, something like that. You're getting paid. No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, but I, I I really try to live by that because you know when you're in the moment and you make a decision that's what you wanted in that moment so I try to live with truly with that like no regrets okay like boom mistake happens but I can I can only learn from it and move forward Jake Jake PTR real quick Hold to refresh your speak and then <laughs> <laughs> literally no regrets <laughs> But you know, Jake, I, I want I want to present you real quick because I'm super happy you're making a room tonight. I'm so glad to have you, bro. And seeing the side of you is so honestly like like respect. I want to present you to Swan. Swan's absolutely amazing, and I'm sure she has some questions for you. But Swan, uh, uh, mic is yours. Thanks for Jake. So excited to meet you. I've heard you in some rooms here, and you're brilliant. Uh, if it's okay, I have two quick questions, but I promise they're related. Yeah, no, thank you. I, I appreciate I appreciate the compliment, honestly. Um, I'm so curious what you'll have to say about these. I mean, you clearly have a dozen careers already, right? Obviously, YouTuber, you're an actor, rapper, producer, boxer, and more. What's next that you still want to do that you haven't conquered, and why haven't you started it? Yeah, great question. I think... Um, I think for me in this in this stage of my life right now, it's it's focusing on my like personal brand growth um, f for the next couple of years, especially with this this boxing stuff that I'm I'm loving, especially while I'm young and hungry, athletic, and have all this energy. But um, I sort of in a couple of years want to delete all my all my social media, go completely rogue, and. Uh, and this is it's sort of crazy. I don't, I don't think I've ever talked about this, but I want to act like I'm starting from nothing again and maybe like invest $25,000 into myself and see if I can create a multi-million dollar company or startup and like start from scratch and like sort of challenge myself to have like a product, a consumer product or some sort of tech software startup and uh, see if I can turn it into a billion dollar company. Um, I know it sounds it sounds crazy, but I just think it would be super interesting and like document the whole entire process to see if I fail or, or to see if I succeed. That's dope. I mean, first of all, deleting your social media is the ultimate power move. Um, and secondly, I've worked with influencers for lots of years. I was at Nike, Estee Lauder, et cetera. Um, but I also worked with the Sway guys to build an energy drink and some other things. So if you ever want to chat about having influence and turning it into product and growing it as a company, I'm here for you. Um, Amazing. The, yeah, no, I yeah. followed. I, I didn't know you were behind um, Annie, but that's super dope. If that's it. But um, yeah, I would love to. I would love to chat for sure. Yeah, we should do it. Um, we actually. So we were selling online on Amazon and our own website. And we just got our first retail distribution. So we're going in stores next week in the Northeast, so we're all flying out there and doing stupid antics and trying not to burn down the store. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I love it. The other quick question. Yeah, the other quick question. All right, so you've already got all this stuff. You've got more plans. You've clearly got lots of life left to live, but out of all these, including what may still come, what's the single thing you most want to be remembered for? Um, wow. Deep, deep questions. <laughs> no, no, I like it. Uh, man, I think I think about this a lot, and sort of when you when you mention some of the these legends' names, they have this this aura or thought or feeling that goes along with it. Um, and yeah, when I die, I just want a, a legacy to be carried on. For, forever and and to have like that Paul name, which is a, like I'm the I'm the first sort of generation of success in my family as, as uh, alongside of my brother. Um, I think my brother was the first person to actually even go to uh, college 
from our family or get a scholarship. Um, but I, I, I want that name to, to ring bells and to be a part of history. Like when people talk about coming into the 21st century and the digital age and social media and, 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 um, and influencers. Hey, Wes, bro. What's up? <laughs> um, I'm going to mute myself. Sorry about that. But no, you're good. Um, but yeah, like when this, when we're, we're living in a, in a, such a crazy time where everything's advancing. And I feel like I was lucky and blessed enough to be right on the cutting edge of it. And because of that, that's what I'm, that's why I'm motivated every single day because there's only maybe five to 10 people that are in the position that I am to be able to influence this next generation underneath us. And that are at the cutting edge of like influencing culture and uh, content and all of this stuff. So I'm, I'm working every day yeah, just to, just to, I guess, die a legend and I don't even know exactly what that means or, or, you know, like, or, uh, <laughs> how to, how to get there. But, um, I think it's just taking it day by day and knowing, knowing that that's sort of in the back of my head. I don't know if that answered your question. I feel like I kind of went on a tangent. No, you answered it beautifully. I mean, I love what you kind of referred to as the, you know, first generation to go to college. That was me. I was the first person in my dad's extended family. Both my parents, my dad had 11 siblings, first one to go to college. And it used to be that was the only way to up level. And what's really cool about this next generation, yours, is that you guys have tools that you don't only have to do that path. There's so many other ways to succeed. And so, yeah, I think it's beautiful thinking about the legacy you'll live. All right. Can I ask Jake's mom? And yes. Yes. You know, I know his family history a bit. Um, Jake actually would be the first generation to not go to college and succeed at the level he has succeeded. Yes, uh, Logan had a wonderful scholarship and gave it up to, you know, go this this route of, of social media. Jake and Logan are going to be legends in the family of not being scholarly, not being blue collar workers to succeed at the level that they, they've had. Like, you know, I'm a college graduate, my whole side of the family are college graduates. Dad's side, uh, not so much, but they're, but they're successful blue collar workers. So I would say Jake and Logan are setting their, their legacy in, in innovating a whole new space in the world, social media. And Jake, if you want to leave your legacy, I'm welcoming grandchildren. So whenever you want to get to that, you know, move on. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, amazing. Okay, I think no pressure, Jake. No pressure. No pressure. Yeah. But he's just 24. But I want to point that out, because like, I'm a 26 year old entrepreneur. But Jake, like, you're so wise. You know, like your answer that you just gave Swan about leaving a legacy is 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 so pure, and there's so much depth to that. And I think, I really hope people are really taking this in. Because, Jake, by the way, you, you got quite the crowd here, bro. You got about 2,100 people on here. And yeah, thank, I just want to say thanks to everyone for coming to this room. Um, I'm still learning this clubhouse thing and having fun. But um, definitely, definitely exciting and definitely going to be doing some more rooms. So um, it's super cool to be on this platform and to be, like, welcomed by people in here. I think this is sort of, like, the first room that I promoted. Um, but yeah, we got my mom in the building, some amazing people. So Dip Diplo's in here, bro. Like Diplo, bro. I, I, I know I was supposed to call you after this, uh, after this clubhouse, but we want to, we want to know, bro. Are you like, what's the, what's up with this boxing shit that's going on? I know you, I know you're getting into it. Um, you know, I'm inspired by anybody that's just like, you know, me and you, like any young people, we always travel, we, we, we work out, we exercise. If there's like a long-term goal, it's always great to have like goals. And I think, you know, what you're doing, especially, you know, some people might have an opinion about you this way or that way, but... Diplo's in the day, room. You're just trying to do something to make yourself better. Whether it's going to be a great fighter, a great boxer, um, you know, I know that you work with, me and you work with the same trainer who's amazing. Um, and, he, and he focuses on everything from our, our mobility to our mental health. He's one of your trainers. So... I learned a lot, and you know, the older I get, the more I'm like, wow, I can, I can keep getting better at everything. So, yeah, I mean, if I can get into uh, at one point a match or something and like have a goal, 
you know, because I'm always, I'm always out there working towards, you know, being better at what I do. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know yet. We're going to hang out in Miami. We're gonna, you, can, you can fight me. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, a hundred percent. Let's let's link up. Um, I know you just, I know you just got here, and yeah, bro. Ebok is uh, Ebok. So Diplo, I think, was referring to Ebok, who's um, yeah, yeah, Ebok. he's an amazing like master healer. He helps me so, so much with my recovery and and flexibility and just mindset overall. But yeah, let's definitely, bro. Let's link up. I think one thing, um, one thing about boxing is it's the it's the best like feeling to just get in there i i really encourage like anyone to just go in and try it like i know everyone's done the mitts and maybe like a rumble class but like try to get hooked on it because honestly it'll like change your life and uh, like for me i don't even feel like myself unless i box like i'll be going out throughout the day and if i haven't worked out yet i'm like all ornery and uh and just just not not myself at all but yeah i think people don't realize how much boxing is mental you know and that's like something you when you focus on just the physical when you focus on your speed you focus on your agility and defense that all comes together when you focus on your mind like having mental clarity and that's something that's that's why i started boxing years ago i boxed when i was like 20 and when i, when I was younger i boxed i tried a lot and i quit for like 10 years i hurt myself and i quit for about 15 years got back into it about five years ago but it's probably the most if you if you do it right and you and you spend your your energy on your mind it's your body it's such a perfect way to, to 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 work out and grow and i think you know whatever you apply your focus to it's funny i think it was probably 2014 aaron style jake and, and logan hosted the stage diplo dj and i convinced sean white to bring edm and Ioki and everybody onto that stage that weekend. Jake hosted it. There were still miners. People were tripping out like what mine stars are. But look at Jake. Look at PTR and look at Noah's photo. And remember that day the double rainbows were out? Was that your first boxing session? I think it might have. I- I'm trying yeah, to look at this. Yeah. yeah, it definitely was. So if we look at like how far Jake has come in just a couple years. That's the one thing too, like Nate Robinson. I told everybody Jake's gonna put him to sleep. Jake's sparring every day. Like when you go in on something and you take it seriously the way EDM artists DJ every day, you travel the world every day. You know, you make videos every day. When you took boxing on, you started sparring and training the way you made content every day. And I think people really underestimate how dedicated and how hard you go when you put your mind towards something yeah that that uh that brings up a, uh, something in my head i have a question for west diplo um how do you how do you balance like being around partying and the nightlife especially being a dj and you know i think sometimes obviously like i i just i don't know but like sometimes you could dabble into it or do you stay away from it or because for me it's it's hard with the boxing stuff um just people are always wanting to go out you're at dinners and people are wanting to drink and like staying completely sober is is like uh, all right main thing you got to stay away from uh uh dave grubman i know you're mine yes <laughs> so first of all block him block his contacts and then uh that's my homie but you know when i'm on the road and it sucks because pandemic you know people can complain this and that but it really i got into drinking not like bad but i got into like i would drink you know at home casually drink wine or whatever it was when i'm on the road doing shows i never drink and work i just can't that's like you're doing 300 shows a year you're not gonna you can't even you can't even wake up like you can't it's like no it's it's i love i love teaching i love making music and playing it and, it, and, and i feel like I'm good at it, so I don't like to, I never had a, I had a reason to drink, so once I got fit, that, that feeling where I was on the road and I was able to just like work, it was great. Um, pandemic, you know, my life changed a lot, so I was finding different ways to do different things to keep myself busy, but um, that's easy, you know, also the dinners, man, I hated that, when I had to go out with promoters, I'm like, oh, man, hey guys, like, the dinner's like five hours, and like, your, your girls are there, I'm just like, I started skipping those again, but um, it's, it's all about discipline, man, like, you've proven you have it. Like the fact that you, you know, even when you guys were just vlogging and you guys are coming up, the amount of energy you had to spend on that is, is retarded too. So, I mean, I feel like when you have to, when you spend that much energy on something, um, you focus on it to be successful. That's just what you have to do. And if it's, if it's music, if it's, if it's waking up every day and 
you know, tending to your garden. You know, as a father, you know, when I'm with my kids, like I spend, you know, 16 hours trying to make them the best human beings ever because they don't have school this year. Um, it's all about discipline. And then, of course, even when it comes to drugs or drinking, there are uses of that too. You know, I, I experiment with lots of different, uh, you know, whether it's mushrooms or, you know, there's, I'm not going to get into it, but there's lots of things I can do that actually, you know, the experience can help you with training. The experience can help you with making music and being creative. Everybody here at Clubhouse knows these things, but um, it's all about discipline. 100%. I love that. I, I uh, Often people ask me, like, you know, what's the number one thing that you contribute your success to? And I always say hard work. Like, I'm, I'm getting up and doing the shit that other people don't want to do. And I, anyone in the crowd listening, like, I'm super bullish on inspiring one person in, in crowds or by in, in YouTube videos whenever I'm posting. If there's one person in, in this crowd listening, like, that's what I would say is, like, everything I can attribute my success is, is hard work. Um, so that, I think that's key. Do we want to, uh, do we want to shift the room here and, uh, maybe, maybe refresh, maybe refresh a little bit and get into some, uh, NFT talks or what, what? Can you, like, I think NFT is like the, the, the one topic on Clubhouse that will attract the whole crowd, Jake. And it's really <laughs> so yo, let's okay. start there. Jake, let's start there. Jake, what, you know, what, what, uh, what are we expecting from you NFT wise? Oh man, put me on the spot. Um, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm learning about the space to be honest and just enjoying it. Um, you know, buying some, buying some art, uh, first, first and foremost, and just, uh, I've been following it for, for a bit now. And it just, to me, it's just a super exciting space and I'm, I'm learning it, understanding it, watching, watching it go crazy, you know, seeing what, what my brother is doing, seeing what all these other artists are doing. And I want to, um, I definitely want to do something in the space and I have some, some really cool ideas, but you know, I want to build, I want to build something that is unique and, and cool and different because I think we're going to see a lot of, uh, celebrities and influencers you know c come into the space over the over the next year six months to a year and it's going to be infiltrated and it's already like one of the hottest topics and conversations and you can't go fucking one hour without someone saying the three letters nft um so yeah like i, I i'm just i'm just enjoying it i'm uh, collecting some stuff uh making making some investments and support, supporting some cool dope artists that that I've seen uh on the come up and just getting my feet wet a little bit uh but definitely have definitely have something dropping for sure like in the next couple of months I'm just figuring out exactly what I want to do but I sort of want to be the first do something around the first boxing nft because no one's really done it and you you see all these nba top shop you know nfts going going like crazy and to me i i'm super bullish on creating this future of boxing and what is boxing going to look like in 20 years from now and i think what it's going to look like is m people having all these nft collectibles of our our generation's superstars in boxing um, so I definitely want to like introduce boxing and, and into NFTs and um, and collectibles in, in a in a really cool way. Um, I'm actually looking to collaborate with uh, up and coming NFT artists and establish NFT artists to to do my drop. So sort of just um, sort of just figuring it out and and having conversations with with cool people. But that's. Uh, that's in a nutshell where my head's at with it. Yeah, the best thing about this is that everybody wins. You know what I mean? Like the artists winning because they're getting their fans to support them. People without a lot of money are winning. They're just flipping these NFTs. People are buying NFTs for a dollar, flipping it for a couple, a couple thousand, twenty thousand. I saw one go for us, and the artists still receive commission. So I think that the best thing about NFT is that it re it really unites the community, and allows everyone to eat. Speaking of community, Jake, I just brought up my boy Zapsio. He's part of Artifact Studios, CEO and founder, bro. They just had the biggest drop, not biggest, but one of the biggest drops this week. 
with their worships. They made three point one million dollars in seven minutes. He was the big sneaker. Yo, Zach, you here? Yes, bro. Well, yo, watching. tell Jake because we were hosting a stage, right? With Zach picking me up, saying, "Yo, let's hold space for 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 the drop that we got going on." It was Thursday, I think. I mean, in clubhouse days, it was six years ago. But um, so we were hosting the him and and ferocious, and then through the drop, so pre party drop, and then we select celebrated, and the story of an eighteen year old that you know had to kind of run away or step away from his family, etc. And and he just is so successful in the space with his arts and crafts and who he is and like the, the mind this kid has is phenomenal. Just something that we've learned and the beauty of Clubhouse really brought it forward. So, yo, Zach, you want to talk to that? Hundred percent. Yeah. So what we did was our company is called Artifact, and we're creating a creator-led organization, and we're really focusing on community. So what we did on the weekend was Nike doing a collab, but with new artists and. That's what we're really about: is supporting new and upcoming talent, that giving them the tools to drop. So with Ferocious, we gave him his own sneaker model. He painted it. He did his craziest designs on it, and we dropped them. And the winner of the auction, they all get physical sneakers and the NFT. So we really changed the game of how the future of fashion drops are going to happen. And that's what we're all about: is just creating unique opportunities and organically, just linking up with cool people and making dope shit happen. Really. And we were super pumped. We literally did 3.2 million in seven minutes. And right now, uh, the Mondrip toy is number 21 on resale. We've generated over half a million on resale. So, yeah, man, NFTs are the future. Yeah. No, I could I couldn't agree more. And that's why that's why I'm like super interested in in uh, seeing how this plays out with like the boxing space and the fashion space. There's all these different industries where everyone's going to be coming in and and sort of creating like the next generation of how how kids collect art how how kids are consuming uh product in in general and it's obviously fucking exciting <clears throat> i agree with that 100 percent. i was wondering for all the sneakers that are sold is that are they are they screen printed or are they all actually marked or painted on originals no so to be honest it's our own sneaker model we did what they did with like the babe stuff so i come from the sneak industry so we have the factory in like portugal we have an innovation department we built our own model and we call it our fact creator one and we're just hooking up with dope creators to make their own shoe drops and we can do anything so we don't have any limitations of the same patterns we also innovated by doing like because chris comes from video game industry and he always has like textures so we created like we can do anything with sneakers now that's for me like i always wanted to have my own shoe model and i got bored of seeing the same silhouettes after silhouettes so right now that's why we're positioned in sneakers and allowing innovation to happen with new minds new creatives and yeah it's super dope. let me add to that real quick but what makes us different too is um we're doing this approach that steam did with the Steam Workshop, where we're releasing 3D models to the public on our site. And we want these kids to grab these 3D models and skin them. And the ones we like, the ones we feel like these are new talent we want to build up, you know, we, we drop these NFTs with them and we're just all about bringing the community up that way. That's super dope. You know, Corey Van Lu did a drop yesterday. I, I think Fuocious actually was the winning bidder on all three. I wanted to make sure Corey and Jake got, got a chance to wow. hang out with each other. Corey's an amazing artist as well. Yep. Yeah, he, he's staying on three, bro. That shit was crazy. Hey, bro, I'm getting, I'm getting your, ne- I'm getting your next drop, bro. I'm gonna be there sitting, cause I, I, I saw it too late, but I'm. <laughs> you did, you did. I'm. Uh, Yeah, for sure. I would love to. I would love to connect with uh, Corey and Zapatillo as well. Um, I'll group text you and Corey right now, Jake. Amazing. Amazing. Hi, Jake. I had to butt in and say hi. Hi, you guys. Hi, Fruit. Hi, Paolo. What's up, 
Layla, what's up? I miss you. It's been it's been it's been way too long. I I I, uh, I seriously miss our our um, our sessions. We gotta we gotta do some. I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I'm coming. I'm I'm coming for sure. I, I promise. T Ten o'clock your time. Seven our time. Okay, deal. I'm, I'm gonna ping you. You have to follow me, or I can't ping you. I fo I already followed you. They don't even know what we do. Yeah, Le do you wanna do you wanna speak, Layla? I feel like you have uh. You have such a interesting story, and maybe you also have a take on uh, th these NFTs if you've been following it and how this new generation will, will see art because you were involved with um, one of the, the biggest artists of uh, the, the last generation with Tupac. So I think it'd be super interesting for you to speak on this for a second. Layla, Layla, I I know this might I know this might not be the place to talk about it or what I, I don't I don't <laughs> I don't know if I should even bring it up but it's like I think I think there's something huge that you could do with with like minting one of uh, your and Tupac's like old writing sessions I mean I would I personally as a collector would love that I don't I don't know if that's something that's even possible in your world but like I think that would be legendary and historic um, I'm just throwing the idea out there you know no need it's to respond. totally possible I really don't know I mean that's, we have to talk offline but yes at my garage is a museum of 32 years on this journey. So yeah, we gotta talk about that. Maybe we could do, some, could we do that as a fundraiser? Like to do something like that and then take the proceeds for our nonprofit? Yeah, so that's something that I'm, um, I'm, I've been looking into as well. There's, uh, I actually just learned about it, but um, I believe it's called the Seven Genesis Grant, which is a fund for artists like to, to help them make NFTs, I believe, um, who don't have the funds. So it's basically funding these like younger artists. Um, I'm not I'm not an expert, but um, definitely gonna definitely hey guys, gonna get is, involved. Uh, Tommy, last year, I don't mean to chime in, but that's kind of uh, our sweet spot. So we create NFTs with purpose and cryptographs, and um, we actually do put funds up for different organizations. We've created with a lot of icons and artists and. If you go to our website, you can see how much we've raised in Ethereum and where those proceeds went and the entire history uh, through the blockchain and Ether scan. So I'm nervous, uh, kind that'd of. be something that we'd be interested in getting behind. I feel like I'm fumbling the room a little bit. Well, Fuck. that's pretty amazing. Jake, I'm so glad you brought this up because I have so many ideas and I do have such archival historical stuff. So that's amazing. Hi, Pam. I think my mom is figuring out the how to use the mute button. She's so hey, cute. She's so that pretty. That goes to show how entrepreneurial Jake is, right? Because I've been blowing up Layla for like a week and a half now. I'm saying, yo, you got all those original journals in that library. We can visualize all that original Tupac stuff that you have and figure out how to get this into a digital NFT ASAP. So. I couldn't agree more. We have a few dope artists on stage. Izzy, you were gonna say something. I'd love to hear what you, War Model, Zoe, Ronin, like all that. Like we got the NFT authority on you. 
Yeah, I appreciate you, Farouk. Um, I was just going to jump off of what Paolo was saying, but Layla, you know, NFTs are all about building community. And so, if, uh, you know, with these original scribblings and writings from the great, you know, the master that he was, if you can find some way of funneling that and, you know, specifically supporting up and coming, uh, you know, rappers and musicians and lyricists, I feel like that's part of like a story that so many people would want to support um, to bring things through the generation, you know, a recycling of the old into the new. Uh, and so just remember that when you, whenever you make your plunge with whomever you do it, uh, that storytelling and, and community building is a, is certainly a pillar to watch out for. And, and good luck with that, it's gonna be special. Thank you guys. Yeah, that's a great point, Izzy. T- to me, it's just, it's like we're on Clubhouse, just keep hanging out. Like, it took me a solid two weeks to understand what all this is. I went through asking those questions of like, am I crazy? Um, and then you reach a point where you get it, you know, and, and for myself, along with like endless others that I know, like you, you're seeing lives change in a matter of days, in a matter of weeks. Um, and it's something that like we've all dreamed about, but hasn't really been like fully possible unless you got lucky and you know what nfts are ultimately is a technology it's like it's this real-time peer-to-peer value exchange and um it, it becomes its own ecosystem and all of a sudden you're hooked so again i mean we're lucky to be here we're lucky creativity and art is sort of at the forefront um where it all goes who knows but we're here right now you know what's amazing about this too, and 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 I think we can all you know t- attest to that, especially if we, anyone who's been on Clubhouse the last couple of days, weeks, is you can just go around Clubhouse and learn so much about this space. But what got me personally attracted to the NFT space, and I I, I always say it, I'm not an NFT expert whatsoever. But what attracted me to you guys, and I see you were Otto and Ron, and, and you know like y'all are an industry that is arguably one of the tightest I've ever seen. Like, we just heard that Ferocious came and cleared out and bought Corey's pieces, and like, Ron and I know he's always like helping out his buddies and his boys and just like buying art, and like they're just like buying and selling each other's art to buy more and just support each other, and they come on Clubhouse together, and they promote each other like no other. And I think you guys can speak to that, but it reflects on how much you guys are selling, and it's, it goes directly to the artists. And what I like is how Jake yeah. comes. So Jake is like major, of course, through his social impact that he has. He's a real influencer because based of the impact they have and the people that he can actually influence for real. So it's just numbers game here. And and he says earlier that he doesn't want to just come in and sell out and do the NFTs just to do the money and this and that. He was literally talking about how he wants to actually have an impact on the space and bring something that is related to art and and then. He wants, he's collecting and he wants to, to work with artists that are in the NFT space. So I think that's dope. Like maybe if one of y'all want to talk to that, Ronan, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're tripping, but that, that's something you've always, you know, pushed for. Absolutely, man. And I think that's what like is amazing about the space is that it's so rooted in collaboration, right? Like so the technology literally is creating the, the symbiotic relationship between creators and like their communities. And it allows you to um, just reach them on a totally different level, right? And and thanks to the technology, you can do that um, on a consistent basis. And I think that, you know, you can talk about just like the, the service level of this is art, right? But at the same time, this is a technology that allows for that art to be interactive. It allows for that art to um, speak to you, right? Like we have programmable art that literally changes based on the time of day or the weather outside or um, the price of Bitcoin. Uh, and imagine like what that technology and this is new imagine what that technology looks like in 10 years right like when your art is now interacting with your apple watch that's telling you know your piece of art on the wall that you're sad right so it brightens up and it gives you something to hopefully cheer you up um you know the the connection between creator and community will never be the same and the creators who come into this space now and do it the right way and i want to say thank you very much jake for for you know coming into the space and saying like i want to do it the right way because there's definitely people who aren't and it, 
needs to be um, with community in mind. It needs to be with uh, the long game in mind, right? Like to this, the NFTs allow you to build something now and iterate it on iterate on it forever. Um, so I really would you to like think in that direction and how you can provide value between that connection to your community um, in perpetuity. Amazing, yeah. No, I think that's I think that's what's what's super exciting about it is the unlimited creativity and even just hearing you give that example of like your Apple Watch, like knowing when you're sad and then your art like changing or, or adapting is is just is mind blowing and that's why you know I I uh, I, I love this space and I, like I said. I'm not an expert by any means, but it's just about, I think someone said it earlier, like just us all hanging out and uh, talking more about it and to understand it. And um, that that's that's really the beauty of Clubhouse and everyone coming together. Again, I want to thank everyone for, um, for joining this room because there's a lot of, lot of super, super, super dope people in here. Um, and Jake, when was your uh, aha moment with NFTs? Was it what, what Logan doing, or were you turned on to it before then? No, I was I was turned on to it. Um, I was turned on to it before then. Um, I think Izzy actually was in this room. Izzy and Akash um, from from Genies were were super bullish on it. I think before they even started getting into it from from Genies themselves. And I sort of just started to follow along with it, and th- there's there's um, there's all these artists and stuff, obviously in in the space. But and I knew influencers and celebrities, and I had seen like little Yachty do something like even I, I believe it was like eight or nine months ago, where he had like this coin and it had a song that went along with it. So I've sort of been following along with it for a while, um, and I knew it was going to get more and more popular. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of times in my career, and this is just, this is super interesting to tie everything full circle, but a lot of times in my career, I've been, uh, uh, the pioneer in, in certain industries such as like merch and like being the first influencer to really push, push merch. Uh, and I created, uh, this company FanJoy, which now like services like, 60 to 100 of the biggest influencers in the space um and so sometimes in my career i've been a pioneer and and sort of the first into things but that has caused me troubles in in the past and i've gone into things like not understanding it or being the first and making mistakes um and then there's being like the buccaneers where you sort of come in second with all the knowledge and and uh and are a little bit later to the game but you know maybe maybe you just have like a better understanding of what it is that you want to do because i believe that this is a super long-term thing so like i didn't want to rush into it at all i I think what my brother did is great um and and he's obviously he obviously crushed it but i just want to sort of come into it differently and um and be be a buccaneer and not like rush into anything because like everyone up here is saying this is 5 10 15 20 years from now um so there's there's really no rush in my opinion yeah and here's the thing you say late to the game but you're not like some of the biggest platforms right now in this space have a team size of like 10 full time i mean it, it is that early and some of these projects are like three people big. Like it's it's super early. We're just at the ground floor, right? Like we're just now starting to give a shit about user experience, and um, it might be a little late for that. With as many people are starting to flood the scene, so um, yeah, this is the BDS era of the internet we're talking about. Right? We've got a long road ahead of us. Exactly. No, exactly. I and not necessarily late, but like no, I guess normally with a lot of things, um, I, I come in like first and and do things like right off the bat. So I, it, and I, I know this is, this space has been around for, for a while and um, I know Blau has been super bullish on this space and did like the first ever um, EDM concert uh, in the crypto space. So 
just uh yeah just getting my feet wet man and like and uh trying to understand it and just coming into these rooms and and learning more about it and wanting to wanting to really make something dope when i do when i do come to the market hey this is macgyver um i, I, I love when like we have these these chats and like he gets to the point where you can kind of see how someone's thinking about approaching the space you know, in a respectful way um i know there's a lot of folks who are kind of just jumping into the space with like this idea that oh my god there's all this money on the table let me cash in and just like drop something and i really appreciate you and, and i know actually Paris was saying the same thing the other night like just thinking about figuring out what it's going to be and not just diving in because you can um which which helps create a culture of you know sustainability and in consideration for the art and like thinking about how what you're doing is going to affect opportunities for younger artists and also like collecting younger artists and and pouring into to the community in a way that supports your efforts in the future anyway right like like the the upside to taking your time and thinking about it is that you build relationships and you better understand how you can contribute to the community and it makes your job actually more impactful, right? So it's not just something that you slap together and like, you know, cash out and move on, but like you, you might end up investing in some tech that is necessary to do your job and that creates an opportunity for another artist to be able to move into the space more efficiently or effectively. And so I, I, I appreciate what you're saying and I think I just want to implore the, the audience and the folks in the room to think about this like, I know a lot of people are seeing these dollar amounts and like, oh my God, somebody made three million and oh, they made 6.5 and there's 11 million. And it's it's really enticing to just like figure out what your thing is gonna be real quick. But at least what I'm thinking and, and I see a, a couple other folks are thinking is about like how to be the most impactful, how to be the most valuable to the space because it's the kind of thing that can easily dry up if everyone's coming and to suck things out of it and not thinking about what they can put back into it. So I just want to you know, shout you out for doing that and having that approach. A hundred percent. I just want to, I want to emphasize, especially because now we got a room bolster in that to everyone who is looking to do a money grab, you're not only burning yourself, but you're burning potential new people coming into the space who will participate in other folks drops. So it has a ripple effect, right? This is a negative butterfly effect that happens when folks get burned by this new economy that we're building together. And so just for the, the, the music executives and the brand marketers and the agency folk who are listening deeply to these conversations, I just, I implore you to engage your empathy for the young creatives that you'll be burning if you start inspiring money grabs from these massive multi-million dollar drops that you're seeing. That's, these folks have spent years building up to this point and building out ecosystems that can sustain that demand and that when you're building new uh, marketplaces or at least demand around new brands new people who want to do so in a respectful and careful way so that it can support the community yeah i to that point um it i'll, I'll share an example which is why i'm i want to be respectful and i know we're sort of talking a lot about it but um i was i've been doing youtube like i said earlier since 12 since 12 years old grinding, hustling, growing, growing the platform with my friends getting onto it, like going since I was 12 years old. And, um, by the time I was, you know, 21, I've, I'd posted like probably two, 3000 videos. I had, you know, almost 10 billion views on YouTube. I'm, I'm hustling and, and YouTube like wasn't really showing me any respect. They were like the, the actual people at YouTube, they, they, didn't really support me. They didn't. They didn't really like uh, show show any love. And then all of a sudden, like a couple of celebrities, and I won't like name exactly who. A couple of these like big celebrities um, came came into the came into the YouTube space, and they all hired these like YouTube teams to start their their channels and to start making content. And they all started posting these these videos that were that you could tell weren't authentic and YouTube the CEO and everyone like starts featuring their videos all over YouTube pushing them giving them the best ads and all of the YouTubers are like yo fuck like fuck this bro like we're the ones that are growing this platform and just because these A-list celebrities come in and decide they want to make YouTube because they see that it's good for their brand and they see that they can make millions of dollars here. Like, fuck that. Like, it pissed me off to the core. Um, 
and I'm, I'm sort of going on a tangent, but it's like that. That's why it's like you have to be respectful of coming into in in the new spaces and and just I don't know. It's uh, I've because I've been I've been on the other side of it. Well, I uh, I, I don't want to cut anyone off, but I mean, Jake, to some of your points, uh, you've been early and you've been disruptive. I've got uh, I've got these screenshots from a Drake interview from 2012 when he was 26, like back in the early like Think Me Later days. And he said, he goes, I plan on doing something that nobody my age has ever done. I plan on, no. The question was, how do you plan on taking taking over 2008? So that means he was 22, like back in the mixtape days. He goes, I plan on doing something that nobody my age has ever done. I plan on being afraid, unafraid. It's really the best way I can put it. I'm not scared. I'm not scared to release an R&B song. I'm not scared to rap the way that I rap. I'm not scared to dress the way that I do. Before people believe in you, you have to believe in yourself. He goes, and that goes for every decision, even when you're wrong. He goes, I just plan on being a risk taker and being unafraid. Hopefully people will fuck with that. That was in the mixtape days. Like, you know, the combination of Clubhouse and like, again, what you've done and NFTs, I mean, it's there. Um, but again, the tasteful approach. And with that Drake interview, just the mere word of being unafraid, the phrase being unafraid, it's like, that's always stuck with me. Yeah, I love that. Um, he He's one of my biggest inspirations, actually. Um, and I, I relate to that as well. Um, I'm in a place in my career where I am going down a, like a path that is an uncharted territory. Like no one's ever walked down this path. No one's ever extended their neck this far. And, and, so, and so for me, it's like, I, I feel like I'm this like lone ranger out here in the, in the, in the wilderness by myself navigating. Um, and so I, I can relate relate to that a lot because there's so many people that have something to say there's so many gatekeepers and people that are gonna you know come come along and try to stop you but you have to be unafraid you have to believe in yourself more than anyone else because when people start to say shit or, or tear you down like that's when that's when you uh you have to be the strongest and it's not easy especially when millions and millions of people are watching like they were with drake yeah, and here's here's my last Drake bit because not not to keep that going. What's the lyric? Um, don't ever forget the moment you begin to doubt, transitioning from fitting in to standing out. And with NFTs, what this is 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 a technology. I mean, it, it allows for that again, direct like real time um, value exchange. You can you can legitimately like with an open sea post art that you've had in mind um music that you've had in mind and get immediate results immediate value back in your pocket like that's the part where you know this is happening so fast um where it all goes i mean who knows but we're, we're here right now but that's a good uh thing to have said where it goes so if i can add some advice um the standard erc721 which is the nft for any creator out there that does sell on any of these platforms, you might want to get them to implement what's in, called an ERC-2665 so that you can see the upside in the secondary markets. That's one thing that I would caution creator doing with these platforms. ERC-2665, request that in your deals. I feel like I'm listening to Star Wars Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Uh, maybe. Paulo, maybe... reach me, Paulo, if you want me to give you a little bit more info from. Who's that, Tommy? Yeah. You know, I, uh, hey, Tommy, you know what Paulo? This is from LA, from back in the day. What do you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll hit you. Yeah, I'm back in the day. Yeah. So that's the thing about NFTs right now, like the onboarding process, like figuring out like how to be at the point where you can actually like post your work it's not easy today um it's still kind of like 
old age crypto is getting better, but figuring out, you know, setting up a wallet and getting, buying Ethereum and where to transfer it, I mean, it, it will get easier right now. I mean, it, it feels so intimidating to figure out like what marketplace, um, but it's, it's coming. Like it's coming where it will be almost frictionless, like top shots where even like nifty you can you know if you want to buy a piece you can use a credit card but um the other thing too i mean just spend time in clubhouse like there was a solid 10 days where i was quiet just like again going through those questions of am i crazy like is nft actually a thing like and then i reached that point where i'm like oh fuck i need to get i need to figure this out and and then it starts happening but i i just say that because I went through like those waves of intimidation and um, of course we all want to like understand it yesterday and we all want to like have the answers yesterday but just give yourself a little bit of patience and like lower that cadence and like you will get it because if you're here. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I want to um, reset the room. Um, we have someone dope that I just invited up. Uh, fuck render. Um, I just have a question for you, bro. How? I, I, yeah, I love your I love your stuff. I know uh, we met the other day, but I love your stuff. I have, I just wonder, like, how long does it take you to on certain like NFTs and designing the whole entire thing? Yeah, um, yeah, it, it depends, like, on, on which piece. But if you go like, if you if you if you talk about like my my previous like nifty drop like i built a whole virtual world where people can literally walk around and like see all the nfts that, that i'm that i'm having available in, in in that in that show so um if you're talking about this 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 was like straight up three months uh, 90 hours 10 uh, 100 hours a week which was fucking crazy man <laughs> yeah if you if you talk about like my super rare pieces these start takes a little bit uh, less time, less time than than my Nifty drop because it's just one artwork and it doesn't come with a three D like virtual environment. But I'm working on making all my um, all my super pieces comes with a virtual landscape where people will be able to bring their friends in that virtual space and um, create these kind of moments and um, environments. Kind of. That's amazing. I think. Um... I think what we're seeing here is like everything with boxing, YouTube, NFTs, designing, like everything is just dedication. Like to hear that it takes three months, 90 hours a, a week, I believe is what Fuck Render was saying. Uh, that's crazy. It's crazy to think about. And if you got, if you want something, you gotta, you gotta want it. You gotta really dedicate your life to it and make, make shit pop yeah. in. Yeah, and to me it was really important to create like experience. Like I, I didn't want to just like do, like an a, like an NFT. I wanted to create something that was uh, going a little bit beyond and create like this experience where people can literally see these NFTs in a virtual space. And if anybody's interested, there's a link in my in my bio where you can literally download um, the the experience. It's on Mac and PC. Um, and yeah, if you if you if you want to check it out and take some screenshot and like send it to me and tell me what you felt about this, like I'm, I would be super stoked too. Yeah, it's an amazing experience, and if you've got a VR headset, uh, just make sure it's plugged in. Um, I'm not sure if VR works perfectly though, so when uh, unless someone tried it and because I I, I set it up, but. If you, I'm not sure you can walk around in VR, but yeah. Can you can you explain a little bit more, like how how can someone download too? Because I think for like me, when I was when I was uh, when I was doing it, it was a little bit um, difficult, like to figure out at first. Um, so if you could explain, like. Exactly. Um, yeah. So basically, um, there's a website called Fuck Renderverse. Uh, you. You go on this website. There's a planet called FV290B, and you uh, you can just like click on jump, and it there you uh, to a download link, which is a like, Google Drive for now. Because I I do everything myself. Now I just hired a bunch of like uh, 
uh, I, I hired the dev team to work with me on the next update. It's all going to be more way easier to use than right now. So uh, right now you have like the the, the the garage way of doing things, kind of. But like, um, yeah, if you download the, 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 the experience, you can, if you're on the Mac, you need to control click because I'm not a verified developer. So that's the only thing for Mac. And if on PC, it should be just straight up, you click on it and it opens. Uh, you might have to download Direct, direct X if you don't uh, already have it, but yeah. Hey, uh, actually, fuck render. Have you ever looked into doing like a Snapchat portal filter? I think your stuff would look dope as like a portal you can walk in. I'm not sure if you've seen the ones we did with uh, Ferocious when we did the draws. It was so cool. A dope portal for, for him. So you can see all the Ferocious on <laughs> Yeah, actually, I, I never thought about doing this. Um, I think it could be interesting. I did like a couple face filters on Instagram that like literally blew up uh, like 100 million like views, which was crazy. Uh, but yeah, I never really played with Snapchat and it's something that would be, I would be really interested to for sure. Yeah, hit me up, man. We can just like, you explain those, um, portal, those uh, Snapchat portal filters a little more? I thought that yeah. was really cool how you guys did that. So. Yeah. So, um, before all this, I came from like this, the skin industry of video games, right? Where I had to design a bunch of skins for games, like CSGO and Dota 2. So what I did is I took advantage of knowing how to optimize game assets because a lot of these games have, uh, you know, rules and everything so they can be esports ready. And on Snapchat, like I figured out how to co basically put a bunch of shit inside the filter because you have limitations in Snapchat too. And I figured out how to make like, I've seen people do these portals before too, but you can make really cool portal filters in, in, in Lens Studio. And you, it, if, you put, if you basically optimize everything correctly, um, it can be like a whole world you can walk in. It's really dope. Like it's, it's really, uh, really cool. But dude, Corey, dude, like if you want, like let's talk after this. And yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're talking, I got some, I got some dope ideas. I'm, um... I have a gallery up here in New York, and um, I'm just trying to work on ways that we can um, connect the physical world with the metaverse and have a collection of NFTs and stuff where you can come see them physically and also interact um, digitally. So I think you, that, that AR filter would help me out a little bit to do that. Yeah, that's and, dope. And, and, and it's Snapchat anyways, right? So I think it's like the best to always display with like easily to access AR technology for NFTs. And, and another thing I wanted to jump in with, if no one's been on crypto voxels yet, I would really recommend jumping on. Crypto voxels is pretty much Minecraft, but you buy land with like crypto and you can like create amazing like storefronts or experiences and you can link all the links to your NFT on OpenSea. And if you go in there, it's a crazy world of people just like creating amazing like buildings and building communities and it's a real good use case for the utility behind uh nfts are so you make sure you check it out are you um are you bullish on like sandbox or what platform are you going through with that for that because i wanted to mm. go ahead go ahead yeah no so how we're tackling it is all of our nfts they come with at least one virtual skin in like sandbox decentral and crypto voxels so all of them right now it just different communities live on different platforms and i think as nfts develop they're all going to have if they're going to evolve into different sorts of platforms but i believe in all of them and like decentraland with their mana token they've been killing it and yeah I, I, the thing i love about crypto voxels is you can just pop in on a browser you don't need to wait like 10 20 minutes to load in so it's very easy you easy to use and you can just send on a link where you're at and they can just spawn in and check out your office. Hey, how many more minutes do yeah. we have on this? Hey, Zach Dio, can you, can you guys work like, I, I, are you guys the same company? Yeah, so we're both part of Artifact Studio. We're okay. building like a digital version of Supreme, you could call it like a culture brand around collectibles. Heavily focused on sneakers. Are, oh, so it's not like you take an existing no. uh, NFT. No, we build our own sort of IPs, sort of merging the games because we come from gaming and fashion uh, and merging the worlds together. You can check us out if you check RTSK. Yeah, check them out for Insta or Instagram. But you don't take like existing, like you don't take an, an existing NFT and then potentially apply it in to, to your 
to your products? Kind of. So when you buy one of our NFTs, we'll mint you guys a skin in like Sandbox, Decentraland. And a really cool thing we did, if you're on our website, we have a shoot X and we built our own sort of back end for it. And as bids increased, we had a procedural AI design. And the more people bid, the higher the design evolved to. And then at the, it ended at like stage six with a bid of 22,000. And the owner of that got the physical sneakers, an exclusive skin in sandbox, uh, like Snapchat try on filter. So we're really like looking into what other ways and layers we can add on top of these NFTs. Because I feel like the real future of these uh, tokens is they can be used as like passports into games, experiences, communities, and uh, I feel like more people should look at what can they change about NFTs and not just look at them as one set medium. They're, they can yeah. be used in so many ways. Hi, so I actually have a question. Um, <clears throat> so my background is in AI research, but like I'm, I've been very curious about the intersection of AI and NFTs, and you mentioned in AI designs. And so I'm just curious what you mean by that, right? Because like I do have some experience with um, interactive like vision tracking art, stuff like that that I just used to do for fun. And I've been curious about is there really an exploration of the intersection of interactive almost AI experiences and NFTs yet? So if you could elaborate a little bit more on like what you mean by the AI design that grew, like I'm assuming that you mean something graph based, but I don't want to assume anything because I'm just curious as to what people are already doing in the space. It's, it's like it's like that GAN stuff, machine learning. Like there's, there's actually a few artists that have done AI type based art where they sold as an NFT. So they would like generate the art beforehand and admit it. But there's a lot of these artists. I forgot the name of these artists, but you can literally Google like AI NFTs and there's like a lot of dope projects out there. Awesome. Do you know if there's anything being done with language How many more monster? minutes do we have on this? I'm um, not sure, to be honest. I will look into it. It's definitely something of interest. It's definitely fascinating. Um, you have another hour on the car. Bro, are you sleeping? No, I'm here. I'm letting. I love the flow. You guys are just like the way you guys are just like building bridges on stage all the time on Clubhouse, doing business with one another. I mean, I've known Zap for years, and from the days he used to freaking like do custom Yeezys on Instagram and try to slang them on my Instagram pages. <laughs> so I'm like, that's and dope. Now, like years ago to be like, yo, I can make those custom Yeezys for you. And now this guy's talking like metaverse, Snapchat filters, NFTs, three million dollars in five minutes and shit. And I'm just like, wow, like, damn. Yeah, definitely not sleeping. Bro, I've been in the game for years. You know the grind, man. We've been hustling like at social media accounts before sneakers. I've been in the game for six years, and I'm super stoked to be at this point in time where there's an ability to innovate and create new things. You know, is that like? generations of changing bro we need to make some like boxing gloves into like an art piece that's like bro. some next level shit honestly like uh, i'm gonna hit you up after this we're working on some mad shit that i want to tell you about where it can fit into boxing and ufc style stuff so hit me up we'll connect it for Let's sure cool stuff, well, jake what would be cool too is taking some of your boxing memorabilia and digitizing that into an nft no, for sure. I think the the let's run it, bro. Me versus you. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see some skills. Actually, with this boxing NFT, we can make it as a wearable with the AR filter, where you'd be able to see it on your hands. So keep that in mind. We'll be able to pull that off. Amazing, bro. Yeah, we definitely all we definitely all need to connect, and I think uh, we're gonna with our minds combined, we're gonna come up with some next level shit because bro I, I i see like i just see um it all in my head and i need i need someone to help me like make it come to life uh, i think that's that's the beauty of it um Where you going to uh, yo what about minting well first of all you got that right here we're going to connect with everyone zap i got you and 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 second of all i can't wait to so that you can mint the moment you knock Aspen down in the first round. Dude, that would be crazy. <laughs>
Yes. You knocked out Nate Robinson, or one of you knocked out Connor. In the moment, is so much better, though, than in retrospect. Facts. Facts. Yeah, no, if I... The Nate Robinson moment's, like, crazy. And we have... We have, uh... The gnarliest, like, footage of Nate. Like, my my camera guy was, uh, ringside. And there was really no other better angle of it. Um, so it's, it's like, a different angle that no one's really ever seen before of, of that knockout, which is... Which is crazy, but yeah, it's it's super it's it's super exciting. I I'm I'm interested, Zap, to uh, like hear how you think of all the like shoe culture, hip hop culture, and and how that's gonna like come into the NFT space. Like, do you do you think you're gonna see, we're gonna see like all the hip hop artists sort of jump into this, or it almost seems a little bit it almost seems a little bit left field for for some hip hop artists to to do it but I don't I don't know. From from my perspective on that stuff is right now like the community's been going strong for like three, four years, right? This these are tight knit communities of creators building each other up, helping them out. And I feel like a lot of mainstreams looking in, but the problem they have is everything's transparent. It's on the blockchain. And if something's there for like profit, the community will check that out and cancel it, right? Um, it's gonna be like a transitionary period. Like I know Nike's trying to get into the space and all these big brands. And I think the element they're missing is culture and community, which you can't really replicate or profit off, right? It's all about how people generate value. And that's why all these, like, we have a community of 200 Discord kids, right? From 13, at, no, 12 to 20. And these kids are OG, like Fortnite players who date to mine skin and use blenders to create YouTube thumbnails and like, YouTubers were paying them like $15 per thumbnail and now these kids were putting them on crypto and NFT and they're making like money buying Teslas so I, I'm really passionate about that sort of demographic of kids who haven't had the opportunity to monetize their creativity coming in instead of looking at like huge mainstream like hip hop coming in or that's just my personal take on it but yeah, I agree. I think that, that was a good point. You know, we've been brainstorming on this space for a long time. My name's Paolo, and some context about me, I've been a graffiti artist most of my life. I got arrested the first time riding on walls when I was nine years old. I've been painting freight trains for most of my teenage and young adult life. All of my closest homies grew up graffiti artists here in L.A., and New York, and San Francisco, so... Art is a real big part of my life. I'm a poet, I'm a fine artist, I paint, I'm a visual artist. But, you know, as I became a father at a very young age, business became my medium. And that's where, when I discovered Jake when he was 17 years old, I, I really saw a younger version of me inside of him. Jake has always been really big in hip hop culture, sneaker culture, and the YouTube persona that he showed with the young audience, he never really showed that side of who he was. So art has always been a big, big part of Jake's life, life as well. So we're really bullish NFT. You know, I'll tell the story again. I was at a, a, a $20 million home in Malibu. And the first graffiti crew that Retina was ever in was in my graffiti crew when he was about 12 years old. And I saw a Retina on a wall and I was like, wow, that's a dope piece. How much you pay for that? They were like, oh, it's a knockoff. I was like, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, we got it from some interior designer. And the thing about what NFTs are going to do and what they do do on the piracy prevention aspect of it is extremely valuable to artists where your, your art is your moniker, it's your brand, it's your soul, it's your energy. So, you know, we've been doing a lot of facilitation behind the scenes and we've been watching very closely over the years and we saw 2017 come with a lot of heavy tokens and we saw a lot of the crypto stuff I I was asked to invest in a good friend of mine rest in peace in 2012 to buy computers to mine Bitcoin which I was able to get involved with back then so this is a big big component for us we love art we love culture we understand the art culture we understand the NFT artists to me are like the OG graffiti artists like the OG street artists, 
and there's a big movement and there's a big community. We're really excited to be up here on stage with each and every one of you. And we have some real big things underway in the space. We're grateful to collaborate with all of the digital artists that are up here on stage as well. And, you know, we'll be back here soon, but we wanted to just get this room going today just to tap into the community here on Clubhouse. I'll tell you this, Clubhouse is the future. Artists breaking into Clubhouse is the best thing that's happened in Clubhouse since I've been on this app. It was being kind of overtaken by a coaching community, but artists, we're renegades, we're outlaws. We are the future, we are the streets. So it's a big deal to have all of these digital artists and all of these fine artists and graffiti artists and NFT artists up here on stage with us. But we do have some really big things underway. We're big, some big, big supporters of the art and the artists and the community. We're big believers in with them, for them, by them. So we're up here networking. We're really grateful to have had all of you in the audience, in the room, you know, share this time with us. This is a historical moment. Clubhouse is one of the biggest disruptors to mobile that we've ever seen. And the fact that we're at this transitional period where the power is being put back in the hands of the creator is a beautiful thing. We are creators. We are artists. We're here part of this community. We're definitely going to do another room soon in the future. We just wanted to come up here for a few hours and just engage, interact, network, share some stories with everybody. But we're about to wind it down here in the next couple minutes. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for joining us tonight. We'll definitely be back here this week as well. My name is Paolo, and I'm done speaking. Farak, if you want to add to that, Buster, Jake. My son yeah, Noah's up here. Look at my son Noah's profile picture. That's dope. He's 17 years old. He created that artwork. He's been doing graffiti art since he was nine. He's just awesome. in his blood. So That's awesome. We're bullish on the space. Yo, Paolo. Paolo, go check out that Retina first NFT drop on our site. We did it uh, very recently. We got a few more that's going to drop, but Retina's in the game. I got to make. Go check out the, the NFT we did. Sick. Amazing. Jake, uh, that was fun, bro. Thanks for, like, calling up on us to set this up. And, like, happy you got to meet some of the people on stage, some great minds, great people in the business and it's business space, social media, especially the NFT people. Like shout out to you guys like Ron and Corey, Zap, Warhol, I Tommy man, I see y'all. You guys are killing killing. That's a nice photo by the way. <laughs> That's hilarious. And you guys I'm just giving a little props, little props, little props. <laughs> wow. And Greg Mike, a dope artist. You should definitely check him out. Greg Bell also like awesome to see you like always in those NFT rooms. Like you're just like it's so cool to watch you move. So following you around is definitely valuable. But I, you guys should definitely follow Jake because he's got some big stuff on the way. So Jake, I'll give you the, the final words, brother. No, yeah, thank you guys. Um, some knockouts coming April 17th. And yeah, the amazing, amazing room. Thank you everyone for coming. I don't want to keep on ranting, but um, yeah, more rooms coming. And <clears throat> sorry, love you guys. Anyone that well, wants to reach out, um, you can reach out to me like directly. I'm, I'll be looking through my Instagram DMs and all that shit. So hit me up, guys. And um, yeah, thank you for coming. Peace out. Thanks, Jake. You're amazing. Peace Let's go. go. Thank you. Peace. Great stuff, gentlemen. Oh, that was lit. Fucking long ass video. If you're still watching, you probably got some dope advice from that. Uh, lots of cool stuff happening. I appreciate you guys. Comment below if you want more of these like clubhouse videos. If you can't be on my clubhouse um, live and you want to watch them on YouTube, that's dope. Uh, or if you're not on clubhouse yet, you got to get invited. Follow me once you do at Jake Paul. But love you guys. Peace.